Hey there, CPO here, and it's time to get into this Phoenix Tucano build. So let's get started. One of the things I want to do is figure out uh, what screws uh, I need and, and have in the hardware kit. So what I like to do on a build like this where I'm not really familiar with what I have is dump out all the screws in my little uh, magnetic bowl and just sort them out and figure out what's what. So uh, it just helps me kind of uh, figure out how to get started. I went through the manual to see if I could figure out all of the places where specific screw dimensions were called out. The only problem is in the whole manual, I only found that one spot on the very first page that called out screws. So it didn't help me a whole lot. But what I did find is my manual is missing this specific page, kit contents. So I found this, I'll put a link uh, in the description, but uh, this will be very helpful if it's not in your manual. So what I'm going to start with here is uh, just the um, the servos for the ailerons. And you'll see here they did a very cool thing, which was go ahead and run some string uh, from the uh, inside edge of the wing out to the uh, servo hole so that that way you can run your servo wire. Very nice touch because that, uh, you know, that's an easy... Uh, Easy thing for them to do, which makes it really simple for us. So I'm just going to tape that down while I work on the servo. Let me get this uh, tape off. I'll use that later. Uh, anyway, servo mounts here, uh, but we got to cut out this little slot first. So I just used an X-Acto knife and uh, cut out this slot. I was trying to be really careful not to try and uh, tear uh, any of the covering. So I tried to be as close as I could on the cuts. And then, like I said, the, the temptation is if there's a little bit holding it together just to tear. But I was afraid that I would tear uh, more than I wanted to. But it came out really easy. And uh, that's what it looks like when it's done. And I'm going to do this for a couple sides. But uh, next I'm going to put the uh, rubber uh, dampeners on the servo mounts and little eyelets and then going to mount the servos to these little servo mounts. Really tight fit, goes in just like that. Uh, I'm going to deal with these servo arms later. Uh, I did drill pilot holes, uh, go smaller pilot holes than you need, obviously, uh, and then screw that in. And as you can see here, my servo cable was too short, so I ended up using six inch extensions to get the servo wire uh, to the center of the plane. And then using that handy little uh, string that they already had installed in the wing, I just fed that right through, which was super easy. For now, I'm just going to tape this on. I'll screw it down later. So the next thing I want to do is um, work on the, uh, the ailerons, uh, the hinges. So the hinges are pre-installed, but they're not pre-mounted. That's important. You have These are CA hinges, so you have to add CA. Uh, I don't really cover that in this video, but uh, make sure you're familiar with how to do CA hinges before you get started. You only really get one shot, and it gets really messy if you do it wrong. Uh, but use a thin CA, get it in place first, uh, get it set up. Uh, now I want to install the uh, the horns uh, for the ailerons. And in order for me to figure out that, I just went ahead and put on the, uh, the hardware just to align the horns. I wanted them as close uh, as I could get them. So I lined them up, uh, used a little uh, hand vise here to, uh, you know, drill some pilot holes for the screws. And then the screws that we're using for this are these long 30 millimeter screws. That's one of the things that threw me off originally in the build because uh, they're a lot longer than they need to be, but that's okay. Uh, you just cut the ends off. But uh, so it's these really super long screws. Use the back tab uh, and it works out uh, really great. So then uh, I put some tape on so when I cut it, I didn't uh, get junk all over the, uh, the wing. Um, but this is what it looks like uh, when I cut the ends off those screws. So that is the control horn for the ailerons. And uh, now I'm drilling the pilot holes for the screws to hold the, uh, the servo cover on. A uh, trick somebody pointed out to me in the forums. I uh, appreciate this. I think it was K-Man that did this uh, little tip for me was uh, after you get your pilot holes drilled and get your screws started, add some thin CA 
uh, into all these holes. Let that soak into the balsa. And that'll make that wood really strong right there. Uh, and, um, and so I used that, uh, put the CA in, let it dry, and then went back in and added my screws. Now I'm only using two screws for now to hold this because I still have to deal with centering the servo. I just figured I'd deal with all that when I do the electronics install. Um, but that's basically where I'm at with the, uh, the servo and the control horn. Next thing I want to do is add the uh, horizontal stabilizer for the tail. And so you have to cut out the slot uh, that's already covered. Uh, they covered it all nice, but uh, you've got to cut out the slot. So I uh, just went around and, and cut that out. It's pretty easy to do. There was also a little block of wood inside that slot holding it uh, open, and I pulled that out. Uh, and actually, I'm going to use that later. I'll show you that here in a second. All right, so for the actual uh, horizontal stabilizer, Again, the uh, elevators are pre-installed, but not, not pre-glued. So they're there just for, for shipping and packaging. So make sure you do your CA uh, hinges properly before you, uh, you go any further on this. And then I pre-fit the assembly into the... Uh, into the fuselage just to make sure I got everything lined up uh, the way I wanted it. Number one, make sure it fits. And number two, we're gonna do some work here once we get it installed. But get it lined up as close as you can. Use a ruler. Um, I had to come up with some creative ways to figure out if it was centered. It was you know, pretty easy, but whatever you need to do to make sure you get that thing exactly lined up. And then the manual tells you to mark it with a marker and then you're gonna go back later and cut it. I just decided to, to use a score cut uh, right off the get-go with an exacto. So just if you're going to do this, be careful. Um, obviously, you will only want to make the cut thin enough to cut the cover, not the balsa. Uh, so it's a super light cut. And in fact, later on, I had to make a little bit more cuts just to solidify that. But what we want to do is remove that covering so that when we glue, uh, we're not gluing on the cover, we're gluing on the wood underneath it. So uh, get all that cover uh, removed right there. And if you need to use a straight edge, works out great. Um, and this is what you should end up with when you're done. Nice, good wood surface. I didn't worry about the back. Uh, no glue is going to really go there anyway. Uh, so this is a 30-minute uh, epoxy. Uh, definitely go with 30 minute. I had some 5 and 15 minute laying around, but I wanted as much time as I could to get this thing lined up before it started to set. So. And I just use my uh, my tongue depressors or whatever these things are called, the craft sticks, just to spread that epoxy around. And then uh, got things all set up there. I use a little bit of uh, alcohol to remove the epoxy, you know, uh, any of the uh, seepage as I was putting it together. Don't want that to dry on that covering. And then get everything relined up just where you want it and uh, let it dry. Here's that little wood block I removed earlier. Uh, turns out it's a perfect size to kind of fit in behind here. I don't know if that was designed that way. Um, it's not in the manual really, but uh, I thought it would work out well just to kind of finish off this tail section. So I just used thin CA to put that in place. It's not really load bearing or anything. It's just more, I don't know if it's even cosmetic. Um, but I put it in there. So now I'm going to work on the rudder. Same thing with the rudder. Uh, this time it was not pre-installed, so uh, you can definitely see that the hinges are there. I did have to recut some of the hinge slots just to make uh, make sure the hinges could fit in there. Uh, but once you get everything lined up, uh, mostly focusing on lining up the stripes uh, on the plane uh, was a helpful guide. Uh, but I found putting all the hinges on the plane side first uh, was easier for me than, uh, than the other way around. So that's why 
I pulled them out of the rudder and put them into the plane and they got everything lined up and here it is all C8 in place. All right, now uh, for the landing gear, and this is the last part of this video, uh, we're gonna use uh, these little plastic pieces, the wood blocks, the metal plates, the screws that come in the bag with it, which made it really easy. And uh, we're just gonna put these things together. So these are just kind of press fit onto the hardwood and then these little plastic uh, pieces are going to uh, going to hold those in place. So again, I used my little hand vise to uh, start a hole, but uh, I needed the Dremel. Uh, this is pretty hard wood, so matter of fact, I started with a smaller screwdriver, ended up going with a with a bigger screwdriver on this one just to get some some real torque on. But uh, get these plastic uh, plates put on, and I had to put it at an angle because it's wider than the wood is, but you want it to make sure that the, the plastic doesn't protrude out the side of the wood because you're going to have to slip that in uh, into the plane. So you'll see why here in a second. So there's what the completed assemblies look like. And uh, now we're going to go and cut out the covering on the wing to accept that. And if you press down on the wing, you'll be able to see uh, exactly where these things go. But there's a little cutout uh, right there. You can see that. So uh, it's surrounded by hardwood on three sides, but the side closest to where the fuselage is going to be uh, is just balsa. So you have to be really careful there. And as a matter of fact, um, I learned some lessons on my first one. Uh, and I'll show you that here in a second. But if you get that cut out, you'll be able to theoretically uh, slip that uh, landing gear in place pointed at the fuselage. But uh, it's a super tight fit. This was actually the most challenging part of the build for me. It was getting this uh, wood block in there without destroying the wing. Uh, just because, you know, it's a delicate. That cover is really soft. Uh, now, we also need to cut out the uh, covering for our metal plate. And so uh, I'm just going to cut that out. And that was pretty easy to find as well. The balsa uh, guide there works. So in order to get the... Uh, wood in there. I had to try a couple of things. Number one is I sanded a little bit on the sides of the wood, but more importantly, uh, I had to cut out a lot of this glue that was inside. Um, there are layers of hardwood inside there that have been glued together, and that glue was really getting in the way. So um, I did some trimming in there, and in the end, it was a super tight fit. So, um, but I got it in there, and I found that if I rock it back and forth once I start getting it in there, I could work it in. Now, I know guys who have left this unglued. Um, I decided to go ahead and epoxy it in, and I don't know, maybe I overdid it, but um, I epoxied it in as I uh, put that plate on just to try and hold things together. And then, uh, you know, four screws to hold the plate. Uh, had to drill some pilot holes, again, using the Dremel and a really small bit. And that's what I ended up with as the final mount. A little bit of that alcohol to get up any extra... Uh, of the uh, epoxy. And you can see there, I, I tore a little bit of the cover. Uh, it's barely visible there, but I'll just put a piece of tape over that or something. So now we're going to put the collars on for the wheels. Uh, thread lock, slip a collar on, put the wheel on, and uh, thread lock, and again, slip the, uh, the other collar on. And then just tighten those in place and get that uh, centered uh, and tight enough that it spins freely, but, uh, you know, as little wobble as possible. These wheels are a little bit wobbly anyway, but that's okay. Um, they'll do their job. All right, so now we're going to work on the nose gear. Uh, you've got a plastic tube here for the control rod. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to get glued into place eventually, but for now, um, I actually just zip-tied it in place um, so I can hold it while I figure out exactly what's what, because I didn't want to glue anything in the fuselage just yet. Uh, in case I screwed up, <laughs> to be honest with you. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm running this uh, control rod through, and uh, I'm going to mount the uh, the control horn, I guess it would be, for the, uh, for the gear. And uh, it's going to slip through just like that, and then that's also what's going to hold this gear in place. It was a tight fit into this uh, mount. Uh, 
it wasn't exactly straight. It came pre-mounted on the front of the, the motor mount area, but uh, it took a little bit of pressure to get it in there. But once I got it in there, it wasn't so bad. And then that is held in place by tightening the screw on the control rod. And then now for the tire, a um, little bit of thread lock on uh, on the end here. And as you can see, uh, got the um, there's a little washer on the screw. It goes on first, or a little spacer, and uh, the tire should be centered in the uh, middle of the gear. As best you can get it. And that's pretty much it. That takes me to where I'm at with the build right now. So uh, more to follow. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.